Recently, I discussed the lesser-known piano concertos of Beethoven. In this video, I'd once again like to present a lesser-known work by another composer, this being the criminally underappreciated Japanese suite by Gustav Holst. I think most people who enjoy classical music are only acquainted with Holst's masterpiece The Planets, which gave me the idea of presenting a work I don't think receives the praise it rightfully deserves. And judging by the very few recordings of this piece, it's very clear that the work is almost never performed. The story of Holst's Japanese suite begins with the Japanese dancer Michio Ito, who was working in London in 1915. Michio Ito suggested to Holst that he write the work to serve as a backdrop to his choreography. What's perhaps most interesting about this commission is that Ito supplied Holst with traditional Japanese melodies by whistling them, after which Holst would notate them. These melodies would serve as the main motifs for each movement of the work except for one which Holst wrote himself. Holst, who was known for his interest in the esoteric, astrology, and mysticism in general, was perhaps one of the few composers in England during that time who was open to embracing the foreign influences permeating the artistic world at the beginning of the 20th century. Although the Japanese suite was performed a few times in England during Holst's life, there is no evidence that Ito ever got around to choreographing anything to the music Holst wrote. At this point, Ito had mostly settled in New York City and had moved on to other projects. So perhaps the simple reason why there is no evidence a dance performance was choreographed to Holst's music is simply because it never happened. Before we continue, I'd just like to mention that in making this video, I subsequently discovered Mihio Ito to be a fascinating person in and of himself, who led an incredibly rich and storied life. But alas, this video is not necessarily about Ito, but rather the piece of music he inspired Holst to create. So let's get to the piece. The suite is structured as follows, with typical performances lasting about 10 minutes, as each movement segues into each subsequent movement in an attacker-like fashion. The suite begins with a prelude entitled Song of the Fisherman, and is introduced with a lovely ad libitum bassoon solo, which presents the melody that will be the driving force of this movement. After this bassoon solo, the violins and harp gently begin a rippling musical accompaniment to the violas which present the initial theme played previously by the bassoon. This is my favorite movement of this piece. The first time I heard this movement, I immediately got goosebumps, and what's more is that it's not even that complex of a piece. Neither the melody nor the orchestration is that impressive at first glance, but the result is just perfect in my opinion. The next movement is entitled Ceremonial Dance, and presents the theme between the woodwinds and violas, creating a very unique sound. Eventually the theme builds up to a section with the tempo marking of Molto Pesante, where the entirety of the orchestra hammers out this somewhat militaristic motif. After a short segue, the next movement, Dance of the Marionette, arrives. This is the only movement that is original to Holst, and not based off of any of the melodies Michio Ito offered him. This leads to this movement seeming somewhat out of place in the context of the piece, but it's still wonderfully constructed, and sounds more akin to something Holst would have written for the planets, as it has a lot of similarities to Mercury the Winged Messenger.
After this movement, we are once again greeted by the Song of the Fisherman, this time merely as an interlude and orchestrated with somewhat more heft and weight to it, as the melody is played across most of the string section, with the woodwinds this time offering the rippling accompaniment. What I particularly like at the outset of this interlude is the tone color that is achieved via the unisono doubling of the melody between the cello and bassoon as the Song of the Fisherman melody is reintroduced. This short interlude quickly gives way to the dance under the cherry tree. This is my second favorite movement after the prelude, as the melody and its incredibly simple orchestration is absolutely sublime. Of particular note is the repetitive octave jumping in the harp that periodically accompanies the melody of this movement. I can only interpret this as cherry blossom petals falling off sakura trees in spring. As simple a technique as it is, it still conveys a very specific image in my mind's eye but perhaps you see something different. I was lucky enough to find the origins of this movement's melody, and it's actually a very famous lullaby in Japan called the Edo lullaby, with lyrics pertaining to putting a child to bed, so the origin of the melody has thematically nothing to do with cherry blossoms or cherry trees. But even if the melody initially served another purpose, I feel Holst adapts it very well to his own subject matter. This calm and peaceful movement comes to a conclusion, where after the final movement, Dance of the Wolves begins, and is decidedly more energetic and eventually quite bombastic. I've read comparisons between this and Greeks in the Hall of the Mountain King. I guess there are some motivic similarities, but I find this to be a weak comparison, as I think the movement is actually quite unique and has its own merits. <laughs> For the most part, this movement doesn't have that many interesting orchestral characteristics or innovations worth talking about, except for a short moment where the clarinet and xylophone play the melody together in unison, creating an incredibly unique and very modern sound. This kind of unison or just xylophone melody doubling appears in a lot of John Williams scores, actually, and serves to give more punch and attack to instruments, and offers some additional melodic clarity as it gives the attack of each note of the melody more presence. It's a good trick to take note of. All in all, these movements meld wonderfully into each other, and are played pretty much as one singular, unbroken movement, combining a string of what some might consider disparate orchestral ideas into one wholly inspired and unique work. There's so much about this piece worth studying, from the at times minimalist but albeit effective orchestrations to the unique melding of tone colors, it's full of useful musical grammar, especially in the realm of orchestration, and due to how much is presented in such a quick and compact fashion, it's a wonderful piece for any aspiring composer or orchestrator to study. So that's Holst's Japanese Suite, and as always, I look forward to presenting more lesser-known works in the future, so stay tuned.